Good morning. Today is Monday, the 15th of March, and we're in the fourth week of Lent. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, who renew the world through the mysteries beyond all telling, grant, we pray, that your Church may be guided by your eternal design, and not be deprived of your help in this present age. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen. The first reading is from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 65. So it's part of that Isaiah after they've come back from the exile. Thus says the Lord, Now I create new heavens and a new earth, and the past will not be remembered, and will come no more to men's minds. Be glad and rejoice for ever and ever for what I am creating, because I now create Jerusalem. Joy and her people, gladness. I shall rejoice over Jerusalem and exult in my people. No more will the sound of weeping or the sound of cries be heard in her. In her no more will be found the infant living a few days only, or the old man not living to the end of his days. To die at the age of a hundred will be dying young. Not to live to be a hundred will be the sign of a curse. They will build houses and inhabit them, plant vineyards and eat their fruit. The Word of the Lord. The Gospel is taken from John chapter 4. Jesus left Samaria for Galilee. He himself had declared that there is no respect for a prophet in his own country. But on his arrival, the Galileans received him well, having seen all that he had done in Jerusalem during the festival which they too had attended. He went again to Cana in Galilee, where he had changed the water into wine. Now there was a court official there whose son was ill at Capernaum, and hearing that Jesus had arrived in Galilee from Judea, he went and asked him to come and cure his son, as he was at the point of death. Jesus said, So you will not believe unless you see signs and portents? Sir, answered the official, come down before my child dies. Go home, said Jesus, your son will live. The man believed what Jesus had said and started on his way. And while he was still on the journey back, his servants met him with the news that his boy was alive. He asked them when the boy had begun to recover. The fever left him yesterday, they said, the seventh hour. The father realised this was exactly the time when Jesus had said, Your son will live, and he and all his household believed. This was the second sign given by Jesus on his return from Judea to Galilee. Gospel of the Lord There's a, way, a sense in which t the readings today continue the theme of yesterday. Yesterday was Gaudete Sunday, Joy Sunday. And the reading from Isaiah is full of joy that the, the people of Israel have returned safely from exile up in Babylon and now they're going to have a period of peace and prosperity. And we get two specifics about this, that the old people will live to their old age, young people won't die young, and all the crops that they plant, they'll live long enough to see the fruit that the, the crops bear. A sign of hope, a sign of God being with them as they return to their, their life that God has promised. In the Gospel, you need to know a little bit of geography to fully appreciate uh, what's being said. If you think of Israel as roughly divided as follows, that Jerusalem is London, Samaria is Coventry and Galilee is Birmingham, 100 miles. Um, you will roughly get both the mileage and the relationship between the th three areas of Israel. So Jesus has returned from Samaria to Galilee um, and quite specifically he refers back or refers to the fact that locally he wasn't received, that the, the local people in uh, his hometown, Nazareth, in Capernaum, and said, Who is this? He's just a local boy, son of Mary and Joseph, the carpenter. But this time, 
Many of the Galileans, the people up north, had been down to Jerusalem for the big feast and they'd seen Jesus in John's Gospel throw out the money changers, do the, the various and say the various things that shown he was somebody special and somebody who spoke with authority and they gained new respect for him. So there was a sense of greater faith. But it is a Gentile in the Gospel today that comes forward and says, my son is dying, please can you come and heal him and cure him of his fatal disease. And Jesus promises that he will live and he does this at a distance. And the man goes home and the servants come out and tell him at the very, so it was the same hour that the boy started to get better was when Jesus said, your son will live. So, and John says this is his second sign. First sign was the water into wine at the marriage in Cana. Not only a miracle of helping a young couple in trouble at their wedding, but also a sign of the eternal banquet. It's, in a sense, eschatological. It's part of the, the great story of Jesus and the coming kingdom of God, which will reign at the end of time. And the second sign is the gift of life. And the life of somebody who is part of the wider human family. There's a very real sense this, this it doesn't say it's a Roman centurion, he just says he's a court official who is not a, a Jew. And he represents all the people who are not Jewish and saying all of them will be given life. So today we certainly celebrate both the gift of return, the gift of life, but as the collect and the various points of the readings make, it's in the ordinary things of life that God's presence is felt. And perhaps it's a day of reflecting that it's in the ordinary things of our lives today, which seem so humdrum, that God's Spirit is at work. And if we, through the few times we can have an opportunity to help anybody, keep in touch in our households, treat each other with greater respect and care. It's through those ordinary things that we build and accept the kingdom of God in our lives. We turn to our bidding prayers. The response is, Lord, transform our lives by your divine teaching. Blessed be God the Father. On this day of Lent, he has given us the grace of offering a sacrifice of praise. Let us pray to him with confidence. Lord, transform our lives by your divine teaching. Almighty Father, grant us a spirit of prayer and penance. Grant that we may love you and one another. Lord, transform our lives by your divine teaching. Let us work with you to restore all things in Christ, to renew the world through your justice and peace. Lord, transform our lives by your divine teaching. In the name of every creature under heaven, we praise you. Teach us to respect all that you have made. Lord, transform our lives by your divine teaching. Forgive us for the times we have failed Christ in the poor. Have mercy on us in our weakness. Lord, transform our, transform our lives by your divine teaching. We pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord God, you give the world new life by mysteries which are beyond our grasp. May your church not be deprived of earthly help while she makes progress by the strength of these eternal gifts. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a good day. All the best.